Greetings students and welcome to my very first video on heat transfer. In this lesson we're going to introduce some very basic concepts in heat transfer, mainly defining heat transfer and outlining the three types of it. Anyway, let's begin by defining the object that we're transferring. Let's define heat. Heat is the energy that is transferred from a warmer object, or an object with higher temperature, to a colder object, or an object with lower temperature. For definition purposes, it's important to remember that the term heat refers to energy in transit. Heat is not synonymous with thermal energy. Heat is the transfer of thermal energy. When thermal energy stops being transferred, it becomes internal energy within a system. However, heat transfer is an engineering subject, and engineers are rather notorious for not caring too much about scientific rigor. So to engineers, heat just means thermal energy, and heat transfer is then the transfer of that thermal energy. The study of heat transfer, which is what we're going to be covering in this playlist, is concerned with the exchange, generation, and use of thermal energy, which engineers like to call heat. Now the study of heat transfer is different from thermodynamics. In fact, there's two ways that it's different. The first way is that heat transfer involves non-equilibrium phenomena. Basic thermodynamics, if you've studied it before, involves equilibrium phenomena on the other hand. The second way they differ is that heat transfer deals with rates of energy transfer, so the time component is more heavily involved here. Thermodynamics, on the other hand, is more about how much energy is transferred, with less regard for the time component. And that's why we need to study heat transfer to fill in these gaps left by conventional thermodynamics. However, thermodynamics is still useful to us because the three laws of thermodynamics set the foundation for the study of heat transfer, so let's briefly go over these three laws. The first law, which is probably the most relevant law for heat transfer, says that energy is conserved. In other words, energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only change forms. So if I had a system A that I'll denote with this box right here, and if I fed that system some thermal energy, Q in, then I took out some thermal energy, Q out, and if my system itself generated heat from other stored forms of energy, equal to E gen, then the change in energy of the system, delta E cis A, must be entirely accounted for by these three processes. Bear in mind that E gen is thermal energy generated from other forms of energy like chemical, electrical. It's stored within the system A to begin with. There's no energy that's spontaneously created or destroyed. Energy can't come from nothing, it has to come from something. Now this is a fairly important equation or law to be familiar with because you'll find that we'll be applying it pretty extensively in our study of heat transfer. So for the second law of thermodynamics, there's many ways of expressing it, and perhaps the simplest way is to use the Clausius statement. All this says is that heat cannot spontaneously pass from a colder object to a warmer object without some external work being done. So the second law establishes a directionality of heat transfer. It says that my cold ice cream is allowed to gain heat and melt on a hot summer day, but it is not allowed to freeze by giving away heat to the hot summer environment, even though that spontaneous freezing process might still obey the first law of thermodynamics. Finally, the third law of thermodynamics says that we cannot achieve absolute zero in a finite number of finite steps, which basically means we cannot achieve absolute zero, it's physically impossible. This is actually more a consequence of the third law, but I used it here because it's more practical and I don't want to confuse you with foreign concepts like entropy for this series. Entropy isn't really touched on in the heat transfer, it's more of a thermodynamics thing. Now there's three mechanisms of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. I'm going to cover these in more detail in future videos, but for now I'll just state some general facts about these mechanisms. One fact is that all three of these heat transfer mechanisms require a temperature difference to be present. Without a temperature difference, there is no net heat transfer. The second fact is that all three of these heat transfer mechanisms result in heat traveling from a higher temperature to a lower temperature, which follows the second law of thermodynamics that we just spoke about. Anyway, 
That should do it for this short video. In the next lesson, I'm going to start talking about heat transfer mechanisms in more detail. I'll finish off by thanking the following patrons for supporting my Patreon, and I put a link to my Patreon account in the description if you want to check it out. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.